I know it's been a while since we've done a calculator homework, but this idea of the improper integral and convergence and divergence is a great setting for us to practice using our calculator to see what's going on with these areas accumulating in the plane. So let's work several examples. I think your calculator can help you if it's a calculator active question. Even though your calculator will not evaluate these improper integrals, you can use the idea of getting close and not being at. You can use the idea of a limit and just pick values to put into your calculator that are finite values that will give you a finite area and then make a determination based on the area that's found, whether you think the area is converging or diverging. So if we were to evaluate this integral from 1 to positive infinity, for the function 1 over x cubed dx, using our calculator in determining convergence and divergence, we would put that function into y1. You can see that I have set my x values from 0 to 10, my y values from negative 5 to 5. That's how I got the graph. And then, instead of putting in infinity into the definite integral in my calculator, I put in a million just to determine what the area is doing on its way to infinity. And I can tell that even at 1 million, which is far, 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 far away from infinity, that the output, the accumulated area, is super tiny. It's already super tiny at x equal 1 million. So this area that is given by this improper integral is clearly converging. I could have done some more integrals using my calculator, but the first one has convinced me that this area converges. Let's do several examples where we are not bounded on top where we have vertical asymptotes. Here is an improper integral from 0 to 1 of the same function, 1 over x cubed dx. So the first three pictures here are the same as on the last slide. But my left endpoint is going to give me issues here. This function is not defined where x equals 0. 1 over x cubed definitely has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So what I did is I picked a fairly small, 1 one hundredth, picked a fairly small value close to 0 to see if I could get an idea whether we were converging or diverging. And that area is already pretty much 5,000 square units. So just to test, I went to 1 ten thousandth and the area grew. So to press my luck, I got even closer to zero to see what was going on. And now I have five with 17 zeros. So this clearly diverges. And that's how we can use our calculator on both types of improper integrals to help us get an idea of whether area is converging or diverging. Here is the function 1 over x. Again, if we are going to integrate from 0 to 1, we're going to have issues at the lower limit. This function has a vertical asymptote. I put the function into y1. Same window as before. Here's the graph. I used the same lower limit. And I got a value out of there. And so I just continued to test because I got 6.907, and then I added a 0, and I got 9.21. That wasn't a big enough appreciable step for me to determine whether we were converging or diverging. Clearly, the area is growing. But is it growing fast enough to say that the area is diverging? So again, it looks like it's taking about a 2.3. Every time I add a 0, I get plus 2.3-ish area accumulating on there. And so I jumped here from, let's see, four zeros to six zeros. 
and I'm still working on that factor. And then I added more zeros. And so I can tell that even though it is growing, the area is growing slowly, infinity is big enough that this convinces me this area is diverging. Another example where we have a vertical asymptote, again at the lower limit of integration. This function is not defined where x equals 2. So I'm going to do the same thing, put it into y1. Now I have changed my x window from 2 to 4. That's where I got that picture from. And instead of using limits very close to 0. Clearly, I want to use limits very close to 2. Specifically, approaching 2 from the right, because I need to be inside the interval, remember. And so I have 2.628. When I add a 0 to my lower limit, I jump 0.14. And as I continued to add zeros, my area continued to get bigger. But it didn't get appreciably bigger. Here I had 2.0001. And my area was accumulating to approximately 2.808. When I added a lot more zeros, I was at 2.828. That convinces me. I believe this area converges. And now all of these that we've done, and all of them that we're going to do on this video, we definitely can do by hand. So you can, I'm not going to take the time to do it on the video, it's just repetition, but you can go back through each one of these and you can determine by hand, evaluate these improper integrals by hand and verify that what the calculator told me as far as converging and diverging was true when you evaluated them by hand. So final example. Here we are integrating from negative 1 to 1. And we clearly have a problem in our denominator when x equals 0. So this is not an end point that gives us trouble. It is an interior point between negative 1 and 1. At x equals 0, this function has a vertical asymptote. Again, put the function into y1. I changed my x window from negative 1 to 1. And here's the graph. So I went immediately just to this portion of the graph from 0 to 1 and went very, 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 very near 0 for my lower limit and got this value. When I got brave and put in a whole lot of zeros, the calculator quit. It said, that's too close to 0. This is too close to 0. I'm just going to plug in 0, and what do we get? Well, what we get is an error. We can't divide by 0. So somewhere in between this number of zeros and this number of zeros, we could do many more. But somewhere in between there, we can convince ourselves whether this is converging or diverging. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to start with a small number of zeros and run three or four definite integrals in your calculator and see what your area is doing, knowing that this is what the area does with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros. This was 15 zeros, by the way. See if you can determine what you think that area is doing. Is it growing? Is it getting near one value and sticking there like it did on 
the last function. One thing that I do want to state here before we end the video in the lesson, all of this work that is copy and pasted into the video was done on a TI-84. When I picked up my TI-83 to test some things out before I started putting this video together, I kept getting this error message. I wouldn't get it when I had a small number of zeros before my one, meaning I really wouldn't get it here, but lots of times I would get it even with three or four zeros there. And what this means, this error message, says that a maximum number of iterations had been completed without the stopping criterion being met. This most often happened when the area diverged. But I'm not going to make that connection. I'm just going to tell you that if you get this error, it's your TI-83 stopping. You can do every one of them by hand. But not doing them by hand could save you time in a testing situation. So if you have this issue with your calculator, you need to make sure and let me know that. And then we will determine what to do to get that fixed for you. I believe now most of my students have a TI-84. And I never ran into that issue when using the TI-84. So this is probably a non-issue, but I did want to tell you if you're using an older model and this happens, it's your calculator, it's not you. I would, if I were you, take time to evaluate all of these integrals by hand and confirm that what the calculator was telling me is true about the actual improper integral on all of these. So come to class next time. We'll work on your calculator and figure out these improper integrals.